college, higher education, the big leagues, papers, assignments, late nights, early classes, and coffee addictions. Going to school can often be a mixed bag of enlightening, stressful, interesting, exciting, and discouraging. But even in the midst of this proverbial roller coaster, you didn't think that was in my vocabulary, did you? Well, I didn't either. Even in the midst of this proverbial roller coaster, as Christians, we're trying to figure out what it means to live for Jesus on campus. In this video, I'm going to share my experience at school and three ways that you can be bold for Jesus and thrive at school. But first, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. Thank you for supporting this ministry and becoming gospel partners on patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple. To become a gospel partner, here I'm going to come up a little bit here, okay, we go, uh, do, do, do. to become a gospel partner, head on over to patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple, link in description. Anyway, on to the video. My name's Isaac and this is The Daily Disciple where I help you follow Jesus daily. Okay, so I want to begin by sharing my story at university. So that means it's story time with Isaac. <laughs> story time. Story time. Okay, so when I went to university, um, you know, I was a homeschool kid, so I did not go to school at all. This is my first experience really being at school, at real school. So there's different kinds of homeschoolers. You know, all homeschoolers are different. There were definitely the homeschoolers that were like this. Oh yes, I've made it to the academic institution. I've been preparing my whole life for this. This is going to be a wonderful opportunity to hone my skills that I've been festering. And it was a lot less like that and more like this. What the? I get a locker? Oh my goodness. Wait a minute, I have to go to class? As I began my term at university, um, the stress and anxiety began to kind of take a little bit of a hold on me, having so many assignments and paper pop, papers pile up all at once. That was pretty scary. You know, but it wasn't all stressful. You know, here in Winnipeg, we often have a nice snowfall during the winter time, which is pretty much the whole school season. <laughs> and and uh, we, 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 I went around with one of my friends and we built snowmen all across campus because we didn't want to study and that's how good of a person I am. <laughs> but one of the great things about university is you get to meet a lot of different kinds of people with a lot of different beliefs and I think that's one of the huge things that I'm gonna to touch on in this video about not wasting this opportunity of getting to talk to so many different people. So as I was in the midst of all this kind of craziness of papers and assignments and tests and all this kind of thing and you have this in your mind that you're just trying to figure out how this is all spo supposed to work together and how you're supposed to you know manage and get everything done and all also have a social life there's also this piece of how do I be bold for Jesus on campus and and there were a couple things that I came across just in my you know experience at university that helped me and also things that as I look back I wish I would have done so these are just some things for you some ways to be bold for Jesus and thrive on campus so the first way to be bold for Jesus on campus is to help people around you gain perspective and purpose you know in my time at university I could I'm honestly feel this as well but a lot of the people around there it's often kind of a sad and depressing place I don't know why that is maybe it's just in this state you know everyone's kind of young and trying to figure out things and there's assignments and there's the you know, stressful things but it often could be a sad and depressing place where people are complaining no 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 why why do I have three assignments to do all at once why God why no 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 late for class again I forgot got to study <laughs> why God, why? You see, we lose perspective of the full picture when our attention is only on us. If we can take a step back, we can actually see the greater picture that God is making. We're, we're one piece in that puzzle. And when we can see that, when we can see, yeah, we're here to glorify God. We're here to image him on this earth. We're here to use our gifts for his glory and whatever kind of vocation he is, you know, moving us to and directing us to. When we can see that's, that's our puzzle piece, right? 
right there that gives us a sense of pur purpose right this is where i'm going into this is where i am you know filling um this piece in god's greater picture i am a piece in god's greater picture and that really can bring excitement and joy and a new kind of vigor to our studies so the second way to be bold for jesus on campus and survive university as a christian is to not cower in class it's important and it's it's important to understand that look we're gonna have different perspectives than professors than other classmates it's just gonna happen we're gonna have different beliefs and as a christian going on to campus whether it's a christian campus or not you're gonna have different perspectives but I want to encourage you to not let the fact that maybe the professor may have different beliefs in you or other people discourage you from making your beliefs heard. Don't let it discourage you from answering a question honestly and verbalizing your own values and, and your beliefs and your convictions in God's word. By being bold and, and actually stating what you believe, and it's a lot harder than you think, um, if you've ever been in that situation, you're actually helping other people around you, other Christians that may not feel like they can verbalize and vocalize their own values and beliefs because they may be seen as, you know, intolerant or bigoted just because it doesn't fit into the current cultural, moral, you know, convictions that the culture has, just because it doesn't fall into that but you're helping other people around you also feel confident to vocalize a lot of their own beliefs and values that they once felt too shy or or too you know ashamed of to vocalize i want to read a verse here from second corinthians 3 12. so if the old way which has been replaced was glorious how much more glorious is the new which reigns forever since the new way gives us such confidence we can be very very bold because of Christ and our faith in him we can now come boldly and confidently into Christ's presence because of the gospel because Jesus came to this earth fully God and fully man died on the cross taking the penalty for our sin rose again on the third day defeating death forgiving of us of our sins and reconciling us to God the Father being that mediator between us and God and establishing that new relationship um, with him and a new identity within us because all that is true right we can have great confidence and boldness knowing that we are fully accepted by god we are fully loved and accepted by him so it, we're not out here trying to get the approval of others we're not just here trying to get accepted by others so then we can just you know please them say whatever the, whatever they believe we believe too just because we want to gain that acceptance and love no we already have found that in christ so now when we're in university when we're uh, you know facing this kind of per this pressure to conform into whatever we, uh, everyone else believes when a professor believes something other than what you believe you can be bold and say hey you know what i have a different perspective this is what god says this is what the bible says this is where my convictions are at that is an awesome thing we can be bold about that so along with that i just want to bring out this point that no school subject is neutral so by that i mean you know you might think oh history is just a bunch of facts and there's just a bunch of you know stuff you know uh, atheists could teach history or christian and there would really be no difference that's totally unfortunately <laughs> like i hate to break it to you but it's totally wrong like every school subject whether you are in you know history or sociology or psychology or especially theology obviously you're going to get these different perspectives and biases impacting these school subjects so when people are just saying oh i'm just objectively teaching this no 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 school subject is neutral their worldview is always going to seep through and they're always going to be teaching it from that perspective so if they're you know a liberal christian if they're an atheist if they're a buddhist if they're a mormon whoever it is their worldview their set of convictions is always going to seep through into whatever they're teaching you even if it's not necessarily directly related to that right I'm not just talking about theology class I'm talking about economics I'm talking about sociology psychology even statistics okay I was in a statistics class one time and it went a little something like this 
Okay, everyone, um, come on in. Uh, yeah, take a seat. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about something to just open it up, you know, just to keep it fresh type thing. Sounds good. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Okay, okay. Okay, so, you know, I just wanted to talk a little bit. I know it's a statistics class, but I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, global warming. We know it's a scientific fact. We know that the world is going to end in eight years. What? based on global warming projected all the hypotheses all that kind of stuff and I also wanted to talk a little bit about why children by having children you're actually killing the planet so don't have children um, yeah I had three myself I know a little bit of a hypocrite but we all make mistakes um, yeah sorry Terrence Sorry about that. I kid you not, this dude's kid was in the class and he literally said something to the effect of, oh, you know, we, we, you know, kids are killing the planet and we all make mistakes as if that kid was a mistake and he shouldn't have had it because he's killing the earth. Worldview matters, people. Your worldview, what you believe about God, what you believe about the world, all this kind of thing, it impacts every area of study. So be on alert. Okay, I have a quick announcement. Okay, so you know this book, I've been talking about it. It's my new book, A Letter to My Father, What Your Son Wants to Tell You, but doesn't for fathers, for mothers, for everybody, read this book. Um, you can get it for free now, actually. So um, if you go to dailydisciple.ca, you can click partner with us. And if you partner with us, become a silver or gold tier gospel partner, I'm going to send you this book for free. That's right. For free. If I feel like I'm doing an infomercial, but I'm excited about it. If you become a gold or silver tier gospel partner on Patreon, I'm going to send you this book for free. And I know there's a bunch of people that live in, you know, with different countries around the world, whatever. I'll figure out a way to get this book to you. If you become a gospel partner, that would be amazing. And, you know, I hope you enjoyed the book. So the last point, we've made it so far. We're gonna survive university. We're gonna survive university. Let me just get my reading glasses here. What's number three here? <laughs> Look for opportunities one-on-one. -on -one. Let, your, uh, let your words be an outflowing of your heart. So I know for the other ones, it wasn't specifically evangelism focus. You know, we talked about um, being able to uh, help other people gain perspective and purpose and just kind of a, a better picture of what they're they're doing at university. You know, we also talked about not cowering and being, you know, holding on to your convictions in class. The last thing is more evangelism focus, but also just kind of an encouragement focus. Um, you're gonna get opportunities to talk one on one with people. You're gonna meet new people with different beliefs from different religions. You're gonna get opportunities to talk with these people. And you can also be intentional about making opportunities where you're just kind of having a conversation with someone. And I wanna just kind of encourage you, and this is something that I try to do, it's very scary sometimes, but if you can let kind of your own you know, heart in terms of your relationship with Jesus, you know, let this be an outflowing of your heart in, into conversation. So I'm not saying, oh, go up to somebody and say, hey, do you know the gospel of Jesus Christ? Because they might confuse you for a Mormon. But I want to encourage you to just be natural about what you believe. Similar to in class, not cowering to other people, um, you know, just because they believe something differently than you, but being okay with saying, Hey, yeah, this is who I am. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, do you know about Christianity? Do you have any questions about it? Do you know what it's all about? And for me, I had a really good conversation literally just talking to someone um, at a Christian university and kind of asking them, hey, do you know what Christianity is all about? And just being able to share with them the gospel, being able to share with them, uh, you know, my heart for them and that I was just sharing this out of love for them because if the gospel, if the Bible is true and I wouldn't share with them, right? If I were to keep that to myself, that wouldn't be loving. Actually, that would be hateful because I know based on the fact that he doesn't know the gospel because he, like everyone else, has fallen short of the glory of God. He's destined for hell. But I love him enough to share the gospel with him. And I can just share that with him. That's my heart. I'm not just trying to shove something down his throat. And there's more planes. But, but, I, but I love him. And so I shared that with him. And, you know, I don't know if he ended up, you know, becoming a Christian. But I do know that those opportunities at university are important. And 
I don't know, I just encourage you to take them. So some scripture here from 1 Peter 3.15, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. I think for some of us, we can, we can, you know, fall in this ditch of not wanting to talk at all and just being really timid and, you know, maybe conforming our convictions a little bit to seem less extreme to maybe people that aren't Christians or, or are, you know, very secular. So we try to kind of, you know, mold our, our convictions and our perspectives a little bit just to fit in a little bit more. And others of us might just be a bull in the china shop, just knocking over things, just going crazy. Like, yeah, this is what I believe. This is why I believe it. And this is why you're wrong. Both need some adjusting. Both need some perspective. Just like this verse says, we should always be re ready to give an answer for the hope that lies within us. But we should do it with gentleness and respect. So you have those two sides of that coin, the truth and love. Right. If we don't have the truth, if we're going to cower, if we're going to change our if our beliefs, if we're going to compromise what we believe, um, you know, based on what other people believe, just to kind of fit in, it's not going to be powerful. It's not going to be effective. And if we have that truth and yet just are that bull in a china shop mentality, then we're just going to scare people off, make people angry, get into arguments. It's not going to be beneficial to anybody. But having this truth and love, being ready to give an answer, but also in with kindness and gentleness. Well, guys, that's today's video. Those are three ways that you can be bold for Jesus and thrive on campus as a Christian. I know a lot of you are in university or college right now, so I want to continue to make content that kind of caters to your circumstance and helps you live for Jesus and follow Jesus uh, in university. If you haven't already, you can follow me on Instagram at Daily Disciple Ministry. I post there like pretty much every day and you get all the exclusive bonus content from the videos. I often do polls and ask questions relating to the topic of each video and it's a pretty good time. Also, I post personal stuff. So if you want to know anything about me, then you can go. Okay, I know I hate that so much. You can go check me out on Instagram. Thank you for watching the program. Give the video a little bit of a like down below. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification. I don't know what accent this is, but that's okay. I love these glasses. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time. See you later.